Have you ever questioned about the utmost calamity in aviation history? The answer is hidden in the serene harmony of the Canary Islands, on an ordinary day that spiraled into a cataclysm forever etched into aviation's annals. Hey everyone and welcome back to Vision Vibes, and today we're diving into the fascinating world of the Tenerife Airport disaster. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, you're in the right place to learn something new and exciting. Our topic of conversation is none other than the Tenerife Airport disaster, the most catastrophic aviation disaster in recorded history. The stage for this unraveling horror was set on the picturesque island of Tenerife, pinpointing at Los Rodeos Airport, which today is recognized as Tenerife North Airport. The ill-fated date was March 27, 1977, a day that bore the weight of infamy. Imagine this scene, it's an average Sunday on the island, Palm trees perform their gentle dance in the breeze, waves are lapping rhythmically against the sandy coastline, and the sky above is a canvas of crystalline blue. Los Rodeos Airport, cradled in the island's core, is teeming with activity. Aircrafts are gracing the skies or touching down, passengers are in a constant flux, and the semblance of normalcy is preserved. But as the clock relentlessly ticks on, the weather decides on a sinister turn. Fog, thick and blinding, begins to invade, enveloping the airport in an unyielding veil of white obscurity. The bustling airport now resembles a spectral landscape as visibility dives towards nothingness. Yet despite the escalating weather conditions, the airport's pulse continues, unwittingly laying the groundwork for a disaster of unimaginable magnitude. In the misty two Boeing 747S, one emblazoned with KLM's logo, the other bearing Pan Am's insignia, find themselves unwittingly drawn into a fatal trajectory. The stage is primed, the key players are positioned, and the prologue to a tragedy that will extinguish the lives of 583 souls is about to commence. This was not the repercussion of a mechanical breakdown or the aftermath of a devastating natural disaster. This catastrophe was born from a cascade of unfortunate events, communication breakdowns, and erroneous judgments that would climax in the unimaginable. But what could possibly be the catalyst for such a catastrophe? Let's unravel the sequence of events that marked that disastrous day. The day started with an unusual circumstance, a thick fog engulfing the airport. On this fateful day, a dense and unforgiving fog blanketed Tenerife Airport creating an eerie atmosphere and significantly reducing visibility. The fog was so thick it seemed as if the world had been painted in shades of grey, turning the usually bustling airport into a ghostly scene. This was not just any fog, it was a fog that would play a pivotal role in the events that were about to unfold. In the midst of this foggy chaos, two massive Boeing 747S found themselves diverted to Tenerife. These were KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736. Both planes were rerouted from their original destination, Gran Canaria Airport, due to a bomb explosion there. An unexpected twist in their journey but little did they know, a far graver situation awaited them. The fog, coupled with the sudden influx of diverted flights, created a challenging situation for the air traffic controllers. The usual landmarks that guided the planes were shrouded in the fog, making it difficult for the pilots to navigate the taxiways. Communication between the pilots and the controllers became crucial but even that was marred by the weather. The fog acted as a sound barrier, muffling the voices over the radio and making the instructions from the control tower unclear. Two of the largest passenger planes in the world, with hundreds of lives aboard, were now navigating through an unfamiliar airport under poor visibility. The pilots had to rely heavily on their instincts and the fragmented communication from the control tower. The foggy encounter was turning into a high-stakes game of blind man's bluff. Meanwhile, the passengers aboard the KLM and Pan Am flights were oblivious to the perilous situation unfolding. They were just relieved to have landed safely after hearing about the bomb explosion at Gran Canaria. Little did they know, the danger was far from over. The stage was set for an unforeseen disaster, as two giant planes found themselves on a collision course. A fog so thick you could almost touch it. As we delve deeper into this fateful day, the fog at Tenerife Airport continued to thicken, turning the airfield into a labyrinth of uncertainty. The two diverted Boeing 747S, KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736 were stuck in this foggy maze, their seasoned pilots suddenly grappling with the challenges of poor visibility and unfamiliar terrain. The fog was not only a physical barrier but also a psychological one, heightening the sense of unease and tension in the cockpits of the diverted planes. 
The pilots of KLM and Pan Am found themselves in a tense dance, maneuvering their colossal aircraft through the murky gray, guided only by the sporadic and garbled instructions from the control tower. The passengers, on the other hand, were oblivious to the mounting tension. They sighed in relief, thankful to have escaped the bomb explosion at Gran Canaria, but they were unaware of the brewing storm, the lethal dance their pilots were forced to participate in. As more flights were diverted to Tenerife due to the situation at Gran Canaria, the airport became increasingly congested. The normally orderly flow of air traffic was disrupted, adding another layer of complexity to the already challenging situation. The thickening fog was like a ticking time bomb, escalating the tension with every passing minute. As the fog thickened, so did the anxiety, setting the stage for a disaster that nobody could have predicted. The fog was so thick, it was like a wall of white. As the pilots of the diverted Boeing 747S navigated their way through the Tenerife airport, they were confronted with an intimidating sight. The fog was so dense, it was like navigating through a white maze. Visibility was near zero and the familiar landmarks and signs were swallowed by the thick fog. The pilots had to rely heavily on their instruments and intuition. They were flying blind, guided only by the faint voices on the radio and the readings on their instrument panels. The fog created a sense of isolation, as if each plane was alone in the world. The bustling airport was reduced to a ghostly silence, the usual hum of engines and chatter of passengers replaced by the eerie quiet of the fog. Inside the cockpits the pilots strained their eyes trying to peer through the foggy veil, but all they saw was an endless expanse of white. It was a disorienting, almost surreal experience. The fog was a silent player in the unfolding disaster, its presence felt by all. It was not just a weather phenomenon, but a symbol of the growing confusion and uncertainty. The fog was a silent player in the unfolding disaster, its presence felt by all. Beyond the fog lay challenges unseen. The pilots of the Boeing 747S were not just battling the fog, they were also grappling with a host of other issues. The sudden diversion to the unfamiliar Tenerife airport had thrown them off their routine. They were trained to deal with unexpected situations, yes, but the sudden change of plans was stressful nonetheless. The unfamiliarity with the airport layout added another layer of complexity. Tenerife was not a regular stop for either of the airlines and the pilots were not familiar with its layout and procedures. The maps and manuals they had on board were of little help in the dense fog. The airport's lack of ground radar further compounded the problem. And then, there was the weight of responsibility. Each pilot was responsible for the safety of hundreds of passengers on board. The thought of any harm coming to them was a heavy burden to bear. The fog, the unfamiliar airport, and the immense responsibility. It was a perfect storm of challenges. But despite these obstacles, the pilots were determined to do their best. They were trained for this, they told themselves. They could handle it. But little did they know that these unseen challenges were just the beginning. The worst was yet to come. Unfamiliarity can often be a silent adversary and in this scenario it was no different. As the pilots grappled with the dense fog and the unseen challenges it brought along, they found themselves in the midst of an unfamiliar territory the Tenerife Airport. This was not a regular stop for either of the airlines, and the pilots were not familiar with its layout and procedures. The airport maps and manuals they had on board were of little help in the dense fog. The unfamiliar runway seemed like a maze, each turn leading to more confusion. Adding to their woes was the airport's lack of ground radar. This was a significant disadvantage as it made navigating the airport even more challenging. The pilots were flying blind, trying to navigate an unfamiliar airport with no ground radar to guide them. And then there was the dense fog. It wrapped around the airport like a shroud, obscuring visibility and making navigation even more challenging. The pilots were trained to handle a variety of situations, but navigating an unfamiliar airport in such poor visibility was not something they were prepared for. As they tried to find their way through the fog, the unfamiliar territory of the Tenerife airport became a silent adversary, adding to the mounting challenges. The pilots were in a race against time, trying to navigate an unfamiliar terrain under less than ideal conditions. In the back of their minds, they knew that every second counted. But the unfamiliar territory was not going to make it easy for them. The silent adversary had made its presence felt, and the stage was set for the ensuing disaster. As the fog thickened, the unseen adversary made its move. The pilots, already grappling with the dense fog and navigating the unfamiliar maze of the airport, 
now faced a new challenge, a sudden radio malfunction. The radio, their only link to the outside world, their only source of information in the midst of the foggy chaos, was now spewing out garbled, unintelligible messages. The pilot's confusion turned into a growing sense of panic. They were alone, isolated in the fog, with the silent adversary now making its presence felt more than ever. Despite their best efforts to fix the malfunction, the radio continued to let out a cacophony of distorted voices and static. The pilot's attempts to communicate with the control tower and other aircraft were met with more garbled responses. The situation in the cockpit was escalating rapidly. The fog outside was relentless, the unfamiliar terrain was unforgiving, and now the radio malfunction was adding to the pile of mounting challenges. The unseen adversary had struck, creating a perfect storm of confusion and tension. The pilots were now flying blind and deaf, with the dense fog outside and the radio static inside their only companions. The stage was set for the impending disaster. The unseen adversary had made its move, and the pilots, already grappling with the fog and unfamiliar terrain, were now left to fend off this new challenge in the midst of the chaos. In the deafening silence that followed the unseen adversary's strike, the pilots grappled with their new reality, a sudden radio malfunction amidst the thickening fog and unfamiliar terrain. The eerie quiet of the cockpit amplified the weight of their solitude, the absence of the reassuring chatter from the air traffic control becoming a chilling reminder of the unseen adversary's move. The radio, once their lifeline, was now a source of confusion and frustration, its garbled responses only serving to amplify their sense of isolation. As the fog outside grew denser, their struggle to restore communication became a race against time. The pilots were now battling not just the fog and the unfamiliar terrain, but also the silence, a trifecta of challenges that created a perfect storm. The echoes of isolation, coupled with the relentless fog and the unyielding silence, were now their only company in the cockpit. The pilots' desperate struggle against the silence was a testament to their resolve, a chilling reminder of the unseen adversary's silent strike. In the midst of the chaos, a new adversary emerged, a radio malfunction. The pilots, already faced with the challenge of navigating through the fog and unfamiliar terrain, now grappled with a crippling silence. Their fingers moved in a frantic dance over the controls, their minds racing to find a solution to the sudden communication breakdown. The eerie quiet of the cockpit was a stark contrast to the storm raging in their minds. Each static-filled attempt at communication served only to amplify the weight of their solitude. The unseen adversary's silent strike had trapped them in a maze of uncertainty, the garbled responses from the radio serving as a chilling reminder of their disconnect from the outside world. As they wrestled with the controls, the pilots could feel the isolation creeping in. Their attempts to reach out to the control tower and other aircraft were met with nothing but static. The silence in the cockpit was deafening, an unnerving soundtrack to their struggle against a silent and unseen adversary. The pilots' frantic dance of desperation continued, their struggle against the silence becoming a battle against time. With each passing second the fog outside grew denser, the terrain more unfamiliar. The echoes of isolation were now their only company, a chilling reminder of the adversary's silent strike. In the midst of the chaos, a new adversary emerged, a radio malfunction. The once reassuring chatter of air traffic control was replaced with a symphony of static and garbled voices. The pilots, already battling the unforgiving fog and unfamiliar terrain, now had to wrestle with the sudden silence from their lifeline. In the eerie quiet of the cockpit, the only sounds were the hum of the engines and the pilots' labored breathing. Frantically, they tried to fix the malfunction, their fingers dancing across the controls, their minds racing faster than their hearts. The isolation was creeping in, the silence from the radio amplifying the weight of their solitude. The garbled responses that occasionally broke through the static served only to remind them of their disconnect from the outside world. In this moment, the unseen adversary's latest move was clear. The radio malfunction had left the pilots to grapple with this new challenge, alone in the chaos of the foggy night. The silence of the cockpit was deafening, broken only by the pilots' labored breathing and the distorted voices on the radio. The echoes of isolation were now their only company, a chilling reminder of the adversary's silent strike. The weight of responsibility was heavy on the pilots' shoulders. As the captains of their respective flights, they were responsible for hundreds of lives. Every decision they made, every move they took had to be precise, calculated, 
and in the best interest of their passengers' safety. The dense fog, the unfamiliar terrain, the lack of ground radar, they were all formidable challenges. But the biggest challenge they faced was the responsibility they held. The pressure was immense. They had to navigate through the fog, find their way through an unfamiliar airport, and ensure the safety of their passengers, all while keeping a cool head and making the right decisions. Stay calm, stay focused, they reminded themselves. But the fog was relentless, the unfamiliar airport was confusing, and the silent adversary was ever-present. The pilots were in a high-stakes scenario, and they knew it. Every decision they made could potentially save lives or lead to a disaster. The pressure was mounting, but they had to maintain control. They had to navigate through the challenges, make the right decisions, and ensure the safety of their passengers. They were the captains and the safety of their passengers was their responsibility. The weight of responsibility was a burden they carried, unaware of the impending disaster. Beyond the fog and the unfamiliar territory lay challenges unseen. The pilots grappled with more than just navigating through the fog and an unfamiliar airport. There were other invisible enemies they had to contend with. Their first unseen adversary was communication. In such a tense situation, clear and concise communication was crucial. However, the stress of the situation, combined with language barriers and radio static, made effective communication a challenge. The second unseen adversary was time and fuel management. Unforeseen delays and detours were eating into their fuel reserves and extending their duty time. Every minute they spent on the ground was a minute closer to exceeding their legal flight limit. The pilots had to manage their time and fuel efficiently to avoid a potential crisis. The third unseen adversary was morale. The tension in the cockpit was palpable. The crew and passengers were growing restless and anxious. The pilots had to maintain their composure, project confidence, and keep everyone calm. These unseen adversaries were just as formidable as the fog and the unfamiliar airport. They lurked in the shadows, adding another layer of complexity to an already challenging situation. These unseen challenges were the silent enemies, lurking in the shadows of the fog. Miscommunication can be deadly, and on that day, it proved to be just that. The stage was set for disaster with the foggy weather only serving to exacerbate an already tense situation. But it was a series of miscommunications that ultimately sealed the fate of the two Boeing 747S on the runway of Tenerife Airport. In the KLM cockpit, Captain Van Zanten was eager to get airborne. He was running against the clock, trying to avoid exceeding his duty time. This urgency may have clouded his judgment, leading to a fatal misunderstanding. As he read back the air traffic control's clearance for the route, he added, We are now at takeoff. The control tower, however, didn't explicitly grant takeoff clearance. They responded with a casual OK, which Van Zanten took as an affirmation. But there was another voice in the mix, the Pan Am cockpit. They were still taxiing on the runway trying to find their exit in the fog. They heard the KLM captain's statement and responded with, We're still taxiing down the runway, the Clipper 1736. But their message was drowned out by the chatter from the control tower. The KLM pilot, firmly believing he had clearance, started barreling down the runway. The control tower, unaware of this development, continued to communicate with the other planes, and the Pan Am plane, lost in the fog, remained on the runway, oblivious to the impending disaster. In the world of aviation, clear communication is a matter of life and death. And on that foggy day in March, a series of miscommunications, assumptions, and cross signals led to a devastating misunderstanding. The KLM pilot thought he was clear for takeoff, while the Pan Am plane was still on the runway. This fatal miscommunication would lead to a disaster of unprecedented scale. In the thick fog, amid miscommunications, two 747S met on the runway. Imagine the scene. A KLM Boeing 747, full throttle, barreling down the runway, its pilots unaware of the Pan Am 747 still taxiing in their path. The fog was so dense the KLM pilots couldn't see the other plane until it was too late. The KLM plane attempted to take off, its wheels leaving the ground for a brief, heart-stopping moment but it was not high enough to clear the Pan Am plane. The undercarriage of the KLM jet crashed into the fuselage of the Pan Am plane. The collision was catastrophic. The fuel-laden KLM plane burst into an immense fireball, its shock waves echoing across the airport. The Pan Am plane, struck with such force, was torn apart, its remains scattered across the runway. 
those unfortunate enough to be close to the impact site would have had no chance. The heat from the explosion was so intense that rescue efforts were initially hampered, the wreckage too hot to approach. The loss of life was horrifying, heartrending. Families, friends, tourists all aboard those planes, their lives extinguished in an instant. The air filled with the deafening roar of the explosion, the acrid smell of burning fuel and metal, the screams of those who had survived the initial impact. In the immediate aftermath, the runway was a scene of utter devastation. Emergency services rushed to the scene, fighting the flames and working tirelessly to rescue survivors, but the damage was done. The two planes, once symbols of human ingenuity and the excitement of air travel, were now twisted masses of metal, stark reminders of the tragedy that had occurred. In a matter of moments, 583 people lost their lives, making it the deadliest accident in aviation history. A collision that will forever be a chilling reminder of the importance of clear communication and stringent safety procedures. A catastrophic event that changed the face of aviation forever. The Tenerife disaster left a lasting impact on the world of aviation. The aftermath was a whirlwind of investigations, finger pointing, and a collective sense of grief that transcended national boundaries. As the thick fog of that fateful day lifted, it revealed a scene of unimaginable devastation. The world was left grappling with the loss of 583 lives, making it the deadliest accident in aviation history. A thorough investigation was launched almost immediately, and the findings were as chilling as they were enlightening. The catastrophe was not the result of a single error, but rather a series of unfortunate events, each one as vital as the other in shaping the tragic outcome. The dense fog, the miscommunication, and the premature takeoff all played their roles in this dreadful tragedy. However, the implications of these findings extended far beyond the immediate aftermath. The aviation industry was forced to take a hard look in the mirror. It became evident that changes were needed, and they were needed urgently. The Tenerife disaster served as a catalyst for a global overhaul of aviation procedures. In the wake of the disaster, a renewed emphasis was placed on improving communication. English was standardized as the international language of aviation to avoid language barriers. Additionally, the phraseology used in aviation communication was made more precise to prevent any misunderstandings. The rules for takeoff clearances also underwent a significant transformation. The aviation industry implemented stricter guidelines to ensure that no aircraft takes off without an explicit clearance from air traffic control. This was a direct result of the Tenerife disaster where a misinterpreted clearance led to the fatal collision. The changes didn't stop there. Cockpit procedures were revised to foster better teamwork and communication among crew members. The concept of crew resource management was introduced, promoting a culture where any crew member can challenge the decisions of others, including the captain, if they believe it's unsafe. The Tenerife disaster serves as a grim reminder of the importance of clear communication and strict adherence to procedures in aviation, an industry where there's no room for error. That's all for today, folks. Remember to keep practicing, keep exploring, and keep pushing your limits. Until next time, take care and happy the Tenerife Airport disaster. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to subscribe for more related videos like this. Like the video which will help to motivate us and share the video with friends and family.